Basically, you fill a whale ship with a lot of oftentimes tallow youth who have a pleasant blend of interest in monetary gain and blended with romanticism. And you send them out and soon they learn that the romanticism was misplaced and uh, monetary gain probably misplaced as well. And you go in search of whales. Uh, the longer you do that, the harder they become to find. They start with finding them in the Atlantic, the sperm whale. And then uh, they become so uh, hard to find that they go all the way to the Pacific for years and years. You spend a good deal of your time as a, as a whaler uh, on the masthead. You just need to read the chapter of the masthead in Moby Dick to know how terrifying it is. Then you sight a whale and you go after them in a boat like this to my left, about a third the size of a Greyhound bus, and you go out on this boat and uh, hopefully return uh, having harpooned a whale. That's a long process, a terrifying process, and oftentimes done out of sight of the ship. And then you have the reward of, of hauling the whale back to the ship, and then the work begins. Homo sapiens have been kicking around this world for 150 to 200,000 years, and until very, very recently, thinking on that scale. When the sun went down, life slowed down. There was no, no, nothing much to do besides go to bed, quit. Illuminants were mostly candles, bad ones, um, tallow, animal fat. Technological advances in the, in the production of lamps happened in the latter part of the uh, 18th century. Not only were the lamps improved, but people of the West, Western Europe and North America, realized how very good an aluminum whale oil was. And uh, it was right at hand off the shores of, of Nantucket. The whale is cut up and uh, fed into the triworks. works uh, that is the boiling process of the whale and quite almost uh, perversely the whale itself cooks itself because as part of the fuel uh, the whale blubber itself is thrown into the into the fire to help boil the whale and from that comes the oil and that's just rough oil it comes back here to the Hadwin candle factory this is one of the, the last preserved candle factories in the in America and it comes back in here and it's it's processed over and over again and refined and in the end, uh, you, you have a candle that's uh, the finest, uh, purest burning candle that's ever been invented. This was the center of the, the whaling trade, so the candles were sent worldwide and lit all of New England, to be sure. Uh, but interestingly, a lot of the factories, for example, in Lowell, uh, uh, oiled their machinery front with whale oil, too. Uh, it's one of the, it still remains one of the finest oils you can use, but uh, you're living on borrowed time because the, the resource for the candle is, is expendable. The peak of whaling in the age of sail in the United States was reached in the middle of the last century, in the, roughly speaking, in 1850. Nantucket was the center of a, just a roaring industry, seeking out whales and stripping them of their blubber and bringing it back home and selling it to the world. You know, it's interesting. I think, I think Melville, better than most, describes how that happened. Uh, while the whaling, the whalemen had a combination of romance and interest in financial gain, uh, the people who ran the whaling industry, and oftentimes the whalers themselves, were Quakers. I mean, we have to remember Nantucket was a center of Quakerism in the United States. And uh, Melville calls them, uh, fascinatingly, he calls them Quakers with a vengeance. So you mix that incredible business sense of Quakers, that focus uh, on, on, the, uh, on, on the, the hunt and the focus on running a business along with their religion, and you've got a pretty engaged group of people. You put that together with a harbor that for the time being these ships that are fairly small can get in and out of. It inevitably leads to a success, especially since the resources are rich out there in, in the ocean. Uh, but the farther they have to go, the, uh, the more they have to work on the ships to make the, the oil. 
Uh, and the farther they go, the more they come back with and the heavier laden the ships are. Ironically, Nantucket, forced, because of its success, forces itself out of business because the ships become so heavy, so large, uh, that they can't get into the harbor anymore. And, you know, for preservationists like us and historians, this is actually good news. It didn't seem like it at the time, but happily it went over to New Bedford. And what was left here was, uh, was a landscape that, that experienced economic decline and hardship to the point that development didn't threaten it. So by the time the 20th century comes along, there's a landscape here that's very well preserved.